Polls opened across South Africa on Wednesday for the fifth democratic elections, with the ANC assured of victory, but in danger of seeing its 66% majority shrink. Voting began at seven hours Central African time at the country's 22,264 polling stations and will end at nine, uh, 21 hours Central African time. Thousands of people are already queuing to make their mark today after weeks of election campaigns. Fine weather is expected throughout the country with moderate wind in Port Elizabeth and of course Cape Town. Reports also show that the day began quietly in the so-called volatile, hotly contested provinces such as Hauteng and Northern Cape. That's how we welcome you to South Africa Decides today. I'm Olukayade Alayande. We'll take a report about now, and it's about the brand South Africa. And of course, South Africa Decides will be back in a moment. Stay with us. South Africa, the rainbow nation. A place where just five months ago, all colors and creeds were united in their mourning of former president Nelson Mandela. These images were broadcast across the globe, taking the so-called South African brand back to the levels experienced during the 2010 FIFA World Cup. And I think what was a great thing about it was that we celebrated this man's life. And um, whilst we're in mourning, we're also acutely aware of the sacrifices he had done by 95. And it was time for him to rest. And I think the world understood that. Um, and I think for us South Africans, it also gave us the opportunity by looking at his life um, since he was born until his death, to say, actually, we're a great people, inherently. We're great people with amazing values. How do we tap into the values of that old man and who gave us so much? And how do we take that forward and, and play it forward and make sure that we, we espouse and live and act according to those values that he, he so believed in? Fast forward to 2014, and the news coming out of South Africa hasn't been all roses. The Oscar Pistorius trial has highlighted a major societal problem like femicide. While President Jacob Zuma and the ruling ANC have been embroiled in the furore around the huge cost incurred and the upgrading of the president's personal homestead in Kandla. This is what happens in a democracy. This is what happens in a democracy that's maturing. This is our um, um, democ democratic election upcoming. And I think it's important that South Africans reflect and say, OK, we've had this reality for the past um, 20 years. Is there a reality that we want to change? Is it a reality that we want to enhance? And if so, how do we challenge the political parties to step up the game? How do we challenge the political parties to make sure that they actually deliver against their promises? So I think it's a great time because it gets South Africans involved in politics. Um, it, this is the one time where we don't outsource politics to, to an administration for five years. This is the time where we say we are actively participating in choosing who is going to be leading our reality in the next five years. According to research, 91% of South Africa's population is proud to be South African, while 95% feel a deep sense of belonging. On the 7th of May, those same South Africans will have a chance to show where they find their political home. Thank you for staying with us. About 25 million registered voters are electing 400 members of parliament, as well as new legislators for the country's nine provinces, with seats ranging from 80 in KwaZulu-Natal and just 30 in the free state of South Africa. This is South Africa Decides 2014, and we have a lawyer and rights activist, Liberos Oshoma. And we will also uh, having uh, to join us live by satellite uh, from Cape Town, uh, TVC News correspondent Marcel Gordon in the course of the program. And together we'll be talking about the national elections underway in South Africa. Uh, Liboro, thank you for joining us. Thank you, my pleasure. Uh, it's a day of decision in, in South Africa. Um, yeah, what, what, uh, what do you see happen today? Um, nothing um, 
no, no much. I don't uh, expect um, a, a total departure of what um, has been uh, before now. Mm -hmm. uh, because if you, even though the uh, ANC uh, for quite some time now had been in the eye of the storm, in the eye of the storm in the sense that, um, you know, there's a legacy um, for that ANC is known for, and that um, legacy um, with the fall of apartheid in South Africa gradually um, had them um, win, and then some, some members believe that it should move from um, the former ideology to at least rebuilding and rebranding South Africa. Some still believe, you know, you still can't leave out that um, um, uh, the ideolo ideology that is known for, you know, Africa and um, um, worldwide. Let's take but a look at it this way. Now, there are quite, uh, quite a number of people who don't have the passion to go out to vote. They are discouraged. Why should they vote? Uh, because um, you, it's, it's an opportunity, actually, for you to have a say in the affair of the government. And because um, if you, if you, whether you vote or not, um, if majority of the people decide that it should go this way, you are going to sit down for the next five years and then um, just, you know, complain, complain and complain. So it's always, you know, very um, decisive and it's better for you as a citizen of any nation, you know, South Africa inclusive, to say, look, now it's time for me to make an impact. And if we believe that the vote, you know, is the power of the people to make a change in governance and government especially, and then it would um, be an opportunity to at least have a say in what happens in government. You mentioned uh, earlier that uh, this election might not bring about something that we have not seen before. Yes. Why yes. do you say so? Yeah, because um, whether you like it or not, um, um, as um, political observers, you know, some people would have looked at um, the ANC, you're looking at the likes of um, Nelson Mandela, whose um, shoes are too large for anybody in Africa to, to fit. And then you look at the likes of, um, um, you know, Tabo Mbeki, you look at the likes of um, Walter Sisulu, um, you look at the likes of Oliver Tambo. And these are people who gave them, um, you know, ANC, you know, identity, an identity, an ideology that people came to know them for the struggle for the emancipation of Africa and South Africa. And so, now seeing, you know, the current um, president, you, you, if you have been a follower of ANC, ANC's ideology, uh, you would say that, um, truly, can you say that this current president represents, you know, ANC as it's, you know, it is known. And then also, also because of what ANC stands for, you know, the followership is large. All right, you know, hold, hold, at, your, at, um, hold, your, hold from, your thoughts a while. Well. Uh, we, we have a correspondent in South Africa uh, hanging on now. Uh, we have joining us uh, Marcel Gordon, who is presently in uh, Cape Town. Uh, Marcel, I don't know how many polling stations you've visited this morning, but can you give us uh, a picture of how the exercise has been so far? Uh, good afternoon, almost afternoon here in South Africa and it's all rather cool and calm in the various voting stations we've been to and heard from today. We started off uh, closer to the city centre in a suburb called Rondebosch where we saw the leader of the Democratic Alliance, Helen Zilla, very excitedly casting her vote amongst local residents and students because that's where many students in Cape Town live. And now we're in Milneton and we've just seen Archbishop Emeritus and very famous Nobel well, Peace Laureate, um, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, casting his vote just behind me here, and he's left in a bit of a flurry. And of course, as usual, wherever um, the arch, as he is fondly known, goes, the media follows. So many people who had been standing here for many hours were quite surprised to see the flurry of attention. And he went in with his wife and went and made his mark. Now, why that's interesting is that just a few months ago, um, Archbishop Desmond Tutu made headlines when he held a press conference to talk about how he feels South Africa is doing 20 years into democracy. And he made the big statement that he would be voting this year 
but he would not be voting for the African National Congress. He spoke about his disappointment in the current leadership in the ANC and said while there were still good leaders inside the ANC, many of them, according to him, were mediocre. And just two days ago, um, President Jacob Zuma finally replied to those statements made by Desmond Tutu, and he said, and I, I paraphrase him, he said he believed that archbishops or bishops and pastors were there to pray for people who have um, gone off into the wrong, and that uh, archbishops and bishops and pastors should stay out of politics. Unfortunately, the arch um, was not keen to tell us he voted for, but he's very happy, he says, to have made his mark. He was asked what has changed since the first time or the last time he's voted. He said simply, I'm 20 years older. Um, uh, Archbishop Desmond Tutu is a very respected clergyman, of, of course, a statesman, not just only in South Africa, but all over the world. And one would expect one would expect that uh, him making that statement would, uh, could create some kind of dent in the kind of followership and, of course, that translating to how many people may vote for the ANC. Do we see him taking away a lot of people, uh, persuading them just by that action and statement uh, from voting for the ANC? Well, it is a little difficult to say at this stage. And, of course, this is not the first time that the Arch has uh, criticized the leadership of the ANC. Even in the days of Thabo Mbeki, when, he, uh, when Thabo Mbeki was in office, and a few times since Jacob Zuma has taken the presidency. So it really isn't the first time. The, why it's important is that Archbishop Desmond Tutu is seen in the realm of Nelson Mandela. He's seen as the moral compass of South Africa, the last of that generation left over still in the public eye. And that is why wherever he decides to speak, he's seen to speak on behalf of um, ordinary South Africans and especially of poorer South Africans and indeed God-fearing South Africans who are a big part of the South African population at the moment. How much of a dent that would make in the number of people voting for the ANC is very difficult to tell. But from an anecdotal point of view, many people spoke about, well, if the, if the arch feels this way about the ANC, how are we as ordinary South Africans supposed to feel about the route and the path that the ANC has taken uh, under Jacob Zuma? All right, we know there have been uh, uh, promises of security, but how is the IEC ensuring security today and how has the implementation been? Well, everywhere we've gone this morning, there have been strong security, visible policing, as they call it, um, around the voting stations. But I must admit, everything has been rather calm so far. From various parts of this province, we've heard that people have been queuing since 4 o'clock in the morning, and not just in your poorer or township areas or in the rural areas. Right here in the suburbs, in the city, in the, in the city areas, people have been queuing since 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock this morning, reminding us again of those sites and sounds we heard since the 1994 first democratic elections and so far other than the overnight news of one um, voting station being torched in Richards Bay in another part of the country in the Western Cape so far so good a couple of stations opened about a half an hour late with certain logistical things being sorted out but so far nothing out of the ordinary to report all right thank you Marcel Gordon kindly stay on or we'll come back to you uh, shortly this is TVC News special coverage of South Africa's national elections. We will go on a quick break to listen to what a 75-year-old voter has to say about the election and South Africa decides we'll be back. Stay with us. I'm very, very glad to vote. Thanks God, help me to come and vote. Then, then I will sleep very well because I vote. Because it's a good thing to do when I vote. I'm old, but I'm very happy when I vote. Then I'll sleep very well. I won't wake up at that o'clock anymore. I'm going to sleep in my bed and what help me. Welcome back to South Africa Decides. Uh, South Africans are still at the polls to decide who the next number one citizen will be in the country's first general election since the death of Nelson Mandela last year. It is also the first election in which voters 
born after the fall of apartheid are old enough to take part. But some of the born frees are saying they will not participate in the ba ballot. Uh, we still have TVC News uh, correspondent Marcel Gordon live from uh, Cape Town. Marcel, you've spoken to some freeborns. What is the mood like for them as we're going to the polls? Well, yes, it is the question on everybody's lips. Um, many pundits have been talking in the lead up to this election that it is indeed the young vote who are feeling um, apathy towards what the vote can really achieve for them. But uh, the sense that we're getting from those young people who are voting for the very first time is that there's still a little bit of excitement. Um, the few that we've spoken to have said uh, that we know that everything isn't perfect. We know that our country still has a long way to go. But uh, many of our forefathers died and fought for us to have this right to vote. And we will be in those lines to vote. And that is what we saw this morning. We were at the voting station where Helen Zilla, the leader of the DA, was voting. There were many students there because it's right next to the University of Cape Town. And they really were all very excited. They had their coffees, they had their beanies on, it was quite cold, and there was nothing of that apathy that we've heard of before. Um, who they vote for, of course, uh, depends on where they come from, what their backgrounds are, um, and and uh, uh, what impact that will have on the numbers will be very, very interesting to see. We've seen the arrival of a party like the EFF under Julius Malema, and uh, he they claim to speak on behalf of young, poor voters. Voters, those who maybe don't have the best education and have been found it difficult to get uh, into an, uh, of, into employment of some kind. Um, and, and what they have had to say has had lots of resonance with those kinds of young voters. And it will be interesting to see what kind of figures they come out of today's polls with. And many are saying the EFF is definitely the one to vote. There was a, uh, a figure during the round saying that 50% of young people leaving school, whether at the end of high school or in the middle of high school, are actually going into unemployment. And that's before we look at the numbers going into tertiary education. And that is the part of the market that somebody like Julius Malema and his red beret wearing freedom fighters have really targeted in the run up to the elections. Well, let's talk again about the IEC. How effective are they in Cape Town? Uh, in two words, very effective. They've obviously done this before, would be what the saying is. I visited the results center um, earlier this week as preparations were in place. And speaking to people who were in charge, this is their, many of them, is their third, fourth or fifth elections that they've been involved in. The technology has improved with every election that has come along. Um, and it And it shows in how experienced people are. There was a report from elsewhere in the country earlier this week where a party agent for another party was found at his house with ballot papers. And, of course, the IEC were very quick to jump on the situation, saying that it's completely out of the ordinary, and somebody uh, uh, did lose their jobs. Um, elsewhere in the country also, there was news of torching of a um, of a station, but also outside of the Western Cape. But the IEC moved very quickly, and as far as we understand, those voting stations that were affected by that kind of violence opened, and people are voting there now. Well, thank you very much, Marcel Gordon, for the updates as regards the elections going on in South Africa. And please stay safe. Uh, I still have with me uh, a lawyer and a public affairs analyst, Labros. Uh, thank you for, for joining us. You have heard what the situation is already as concerns the voting in South Africa. What are your thoughts? Yes, um, li like I said uh, earlier on, you discover that um, the people, the ordinary people in South Africa who saw a ANC as representing hope for a new South Africa, um, they look back and ask themselves, is this the same seat that uh, the great Nelson Mandela occupied? It, is this the same um, freedom that we fought for? Is this the same South Africa that we looked forward to? And that's why you heard um, that um, the likes of um, Archbishop Desmond Tutu had come out you know, strongly to say, look, 
this is not the ANC that we used to know. But by and large, you will still um, ask me what I expect. Because of the large followership of ANC, irrespective of what has happened, you know, because of the fact that some people still see this um, party, this political party, as um, a representative of um, the um, um, South Africa people, and then also because of um, largely um, what I would, I would term um, um, a, a carryover of um, its um, influence before now, you would still see them, you know, you know Ghana majority, but not with the um, usual, you know, um, um, 60 something percent and majority that they've had before now. All right, we see a, a, a slight um, decline, you know, and gradually uh, until the other political parties are able probably to uh, maybe make proper incursion into the, the minds of the, the um, voters. We saw a 75 year old go out to vote, and in the pictures we saw, we even saw older people come out to vote. And we are seeing the freeborns not really interested. It, would it be fair to say that South Africa has lost its political new generation because of this voter apathy that we are seeing? No, no, no. Um, if you listen to our report also, she said that unlike before now, there were reports that um, the freeborn were going to, were not really interested uh, because um, to them, they are not seeing um, what um, it represents for them. But, um, but with what is happening from her report, she said, she said um, that... Um, Unfortunately, uh, fortunately, a lot of them are, are, seems to be more interested. And also, for the older generation, election, it's, um, it's like, you know, a, a right they had fought for all, all, all this while. Something they had, you know, the, the, their people had died for. And so, anytime there are elections, it's always like, you know, that nostalgia feeling of, of we yearn for this thing and finally it's here with us and we will not come what may, you know, throw it away for anything. That's why you, you hear the likes of um, Archbishop Desmond Tutu still saying, look, irrespective of the fact that, you know, the, we don't, what is happening now is what, not what we bargained for, what we expected, but I'm still going to vote. And, you know, it's, it's like, look, you, you fought for, for a thing all your, almost all your life, and it's here with you. You just don't throw it away. And so the freeborn, it's it's difficult for them to relate with South Africa of the past and South Africa of today. And so that's why you see them. And then also it will take a lot of education and enlightenment of the political parties to truly, you know, make them see where they are coming from until they understand that you still have that, you know, slight apathy from some of them. Many people are not comfortable with, with the fact that there are reports of uh, some kind of affiliation between the ANC and, of course, the IEC. Do you see this affecting uh, how people receive the results of the polls? Um, not really, because um, if you, if for South Africa, the South African electorate and the um, elections in South Africa, they, they, they are much more, you know, matured, much more, um, a, a little bit better um, if not more than, you know, most other countries in Africa. And so that's why you, you see even um, when um, the issue of um, somebody called with voters' um, cards were, was reported, the IEC had to quickly, you know, jump on it. And then somebody immediately, you don't have to wait to set up panels or, or, or look for committees to begin to look for it, look at it. Immediately somebody had to lo um, lose his job. And then also for the relationship, um, I really don't see that it might um, affect, but I really don't see it affecting, you know, um, the elections uh, substantially. And then um, that also will give, that uh, um, paraventure might give uh, the correct president an edge, you know, at the poll. And so, and, um, but how far it will go is something that we'll have to wait till, um, you know, after the voting for today. Lebron Sashoma, thank you for coming. My pleasure. I've been talking to a lawyer and, of course, rights activists. Uh, the Rainbow Nation is a country with so much color and a melting pot of Africa's rich culture. As its people stand in the sun to decide who the cap fits next, one can only wish for a better South Africa at the end of the day. That will be our show for this hour. Join us again at 1330 Central African time for another edition of South Africa Decides 2014.
I'm Luca Delaney. Bye now.